There are maybe few figures in American history as practically legendary as the American folk hero and politician and soldier Davy Crockett, often mentioned with the epithet of King of the Wild Frontier. Fun fact, used to be my nickname way back in school days. The Tennessee native would become instrumental in the fight to make the state of Texas independent of Mexico, and he's well known for his last stand at the Alamo. Rugged and wearing his raccoon tail hat, Davy Crockett has had myths spun around him to make him a larger-than-life hero, and there are countless books, movies, and articles written of his exploits, both real and imagined. Yet, hidden within the cracks are some truly crazy experiences the frontiersman supposedly had, and one of these is the time he supposedly met a talking, paranormal Bigfoot. This particular adventure of Crockett's occurred at a time when there was a massive influx of settlers into Texas, following the American dream in droves by going out west to fan out through the wilderness in search of a better life. It would turn out that Crockett would be one of these, having set his mind on carving out a life in Texas after having served as both a Tennessee state representative and a U.S. congressman, the latter which he quit after losing an election and left a sour taste in his mouth for politics, urging him to say the famous line, Since you have chosen to elect a man with a timber toe to succeed me, you may all go to hell and I will go to Texas. Angry and bitter, in 1835 he set off towards that unknown horizon in his eventual history-making stand at the Alamo, along with his brother-in-law Abner Bergen, as well as some friends William Patton and Lindsay K. Tinkle in tow. Things would not go particularly smoothly for them. This was an era in which an ongoing territorial dispute with Mexico loomed large over everything, and so they were wary as they entered Mexican-held Texas. Once they were there, they were stopped by officials and told to sign some documents, yet all but Crockett and Patton refused to sign the Oath of Allegiance that the Mexican government required of them, making them legally unable to take action against them. The two who had refused to sign were turned back, and so they were forced to continue on their own. Their journey took them through the Nagadoches area, and at some point they reached a thick, nearly impassable thicket, and went about the back-breaking work of cutting through it with their axes. Toiling away under the sweltering sun, Patton and Crockett decided to take a break and eat some lunch, and it was here where they had a very strange encounter. Crockett reportedly took a seat upon a log, removing his sweaty shoes and digging into his small rations. As he ate his food, he sort of absentmindedly tapped his axe against the wood, and that was when he claimed that an enormous bipedal beast that was the shape and shade of a large ape-man, and quite frightening in appearance, materialized out of the trees and brush before him. He would describe the creature in a letter to his brother-in-law Abner as follows. Whether it was the axe's disturbance or possibly the heat of the sun which caused an apparition to slowly form in front of my eyes, I know not. As a Christian man, I swear to you, Abe, that what spirit came upon me was the shape and shade of a large ape-man, the likes we might expect among the more bellicose and hostile Indian tribes in the territories. The shade formed into the most deformed and ugly countenance. Covered in wild hair, with small and needling eyes, large broken rows of teeth, and the height of three foundlings, I spit upon the ground the bread I was eating. This is all quite outlandish and surreal enough as it is, but making it all even stranger still was that in that same letter Crockett would claim that this nightmarish creature actually spoke to him. Whether these words were physically produced and articulated by the beast or were beamed directly into his mind, Crockett didn't say but he was extremely unsettled by what he heard. He tells Abner, The monster then addressed a warning to me. Abner, it told me to return from Texas, to flee this fort and to abandon this lost cause. When I began to question this, the creature spread upon the wind like the morning steam swirls off a frog pond. I swear to you, Abner, that whatever meat or sausage disagreed with me that afternoon, I swore off all beef and hog for a day or so afterwards. After this supposed encounter, Crockett went on to become a hardcore advocate of Texan independence from Mexico, becoming involved with the growing resistance against the Mexican forces. This would, of course, all culminate in the almost legendary battle at the Alamo Mission in San Antonio in the spring of 1836, 
when for 13 days Crockett and his ragtag group of freedom fighters survived a siege and held off an army of men led by the Mexican dictator Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. The final battle of the Alamo would only last around 90 minutes, during the time the Mexican forces would kill almost all 190 of the defenders, including Crockett, capturing a few prisoners only to execute them not long after. The battle would cement Crockett's legendary larger-than-life status, but it all makes it a bit eerie that he seems to have had all this predicted by a talking Bigfoot. The obscure case of Davy Crockett's strange encounter is quite the anomaly in the man's action-packed life, all the more so in that he never mentions it again anywhere else, and it leads us to wonder what to make of it. There's been a lot of speculation that this might have been a tall tale he'd conjured up in order to entertain his brother-in-law, but the thing about Davy Crockett was is that he was considered to be an honest man with strong Christian values and who prided himself on his word. And during the course of the letter on two separate occasions, he swears that it's all true. Despite tall tales and myths growing up around Crockett's legend, he doesn't seem to have been prone to telling tall tales himself. So it seems strange that he would just make this all up. Was it maybe a hallucination, the result of a tired, harried man out in the heat conjuring up strange apparitions from the imagination? Or did he really see something? If so, and this was a real Bigfoot report, as it sounds like, then how do we explain the talking and this creature's ability to just sort of evaporate in the mist? Whatever the strange case it may be, it's a very little odd account buried into the already storied annals of Davy Crockett's many adventures as well as a very strange historical oddity. If you like what you heard, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and join us again next time for another The Unknown Files here on Unknown Territory.